Yeah, this is episode number two of our live stream. Um, due to public request from last live stream, we have my beloved AC30. And you already heard the M1 with my AB switcher versus my beloved early 60s AC30. This is a very great amplifier. This has been um, modded by a guy called Manfred Reckmeier. Manfred Reckmeier is from North Germany and he is the tech for Peter Weil. Peter Weil is my hero. He is kind of the German Steve Lukather. He played on all the big records from Bonnie M, you name it. So anything on the German radio, you can be sure 50% of the guitars you hear is Peter Weil. And I had to step into his footsteps once when I was playing with a band called the Rainbirds from Berlin. And they had a fantastic song called Blueprint. And this song I had to cover. Anyway, this amp here is, um, yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so you know, this one was the Vox. And this is the amp one. They sound a bit different, of course, because I didn't design the amp one exactly to be exactly what this AC30 is like, but I wanted to show you that I can get pretty close. So, um, what did I do in getting this kind of similar sound here? Um, first, when you look at the settings here, it's kind of pretty normal stuff. I'm using the vintage channel, I use no boost, and I have the mids kind of in the middle position. I have a little less treble, which means like I'm on four. I have the bass all the way up. Okay, so this is um, the setting that I use here to match this. So this is pretty close to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell when it's breaking up, the AC30 has a bit more um, compression versus saturation. But hey, this is the whole nine yards when it comes to a Vox AC30. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the Brian May guitar. I was calling up a dealer, a local dealer, and um, maybe next week. So we can take this to the next level and show you the real deal Queen sound too. Um, yeah, if you do have any questions on AC30 versus uh, M1, uh, please ask and I can come back to your question later. But as you can see, even a Vox AC30, I can get pretty close with my M1. Um, in today's episode, I want to show you a bit more about how you get uh, a killer tone or different tones and how I approach setting up the amp. Um, I have heard many comments from users, yeah, you know, my clean channel, it's muddy and dirty and whatever. The amp is too bright, the amp is too dull. Um, all these kind of comments. And most of the time, I think it's simply the question of finding the right settings on the three band tone control or on our custom control on the side. So maybe let me explain our concept with um, Amp1 in general. We have the three band overall EQ, which is a unique EQ. This three band EQ is designed to be super, let's call it neutral in a way. Um, I have three separate controls, one is bass, one is mids, one is treble, and let me switch. There's some hum, still hum. Ah, so now I'm back on the M1 and the hum is gone. Okay, I can see this from the cameraman here. We try to provide the best sound quality ever. Um, anyway, um, okay, now I'm on the M1 and I'm using the vintage channel. Back to the tone control. So the tone control, the three band tone control gives you the bass, mid and treble. If you compare this to a standard tone control, 
this is super simple. When I dial in the mids, I get more mids. And if I reduce the mids, I simply reduce the mids and I'm not affecting treble or bass. On a classic passive tone control on a guitar amp, when you turn the mids, the highs are affected. Um, I always have the picture in my head like a, a mattress that is on a C, kind of. If you push the middle part, all the edges kind of stand up. So if you have less mids, you get more highs. With this EQ, you simply have less mids and the same amount of highs. I show you what happens when I turn these three um, tone controls. <laughs> This is simply the mid control. This is the bass. And that's the treble. So, whatever we are hearing is, um, yeah, just the one band I turn in. And by the way, we have been using. Um, did we use the mic up Vox cabinets yet? Aha, okay, so <laughs> I was a little bit too fast. So to be really authentic, I was using the Vox uh, 2x12 cabinet. Do we have the picture? Can we show the, the picture of my mic up Vox cabinet? So you see this is the real deal. And uh, <laughs> Now I'd like to switch for the blue box because then I can show you all the different sounds on my beloved settings. So first to compare, this was the Vox cabinet and now this is the blue box. The Vox one more time. And now we are on the blue box. Okay, so that's the blue box. For the, the next sounds I want to show you, I show you my stack 90, whatever, 70 or 67 in middle position. So that's a bit more rocky. You will hear that now. Okay. And um, I use this now for the rest of the episode. Um, see, this is the treble now. That's the mids. Okay, so that's the vintage channel. Pretty easy. What you can see here, everything kind of in the middle sounds. With my emulated Marshall cabinet, it sounds more like Marshall, sure. Okay, how do I dial in the different tones for my guitar? Hmm. If I'm doing it with the vintage channel, I simply have these three tones and that's all. So what I'm doing is I try to find a feel for how each of the three controls work and see how bass, no bass, middle, nice. The mids is super sensitive, so you, know, you have a little bit more punch in the mids here or slightly scooped. I keep it in the middle, then the treble. And this ah, depends so much on what I'm playing. Um, I want a sound that has enough beef, <laughs> has enough aggressive highs, but without being too harsh. So what I found is I can mm, kind of uh, reduce mids and treble about the same amount to get a smoother sound. Look, look at this. So I go from 555 to like 44 here. Makes it super smooth. Or I go both on 6, which gives you more edge. 
that as a basic. Now, how would I make my other sounds match this sound? Hmm. What about a clean tone? And switching to the clean channel, I need more volume. But now the, the sound is kind of too dark. Where's my sparkling? Sounds shit. Hmm. Here's a big lesson for you. Turn down the clean volume. Just start on five. Oh, it's not loud enough. So give it more master volume. Reduce the master volume of the overdrive so we will match volume. Okay. And now I dial in more clean volume, but just slightly. Maybe you can hear that this is a clean tone that is not 100% clean, like this, but has a slight break up. And that's what I like about clean tones. I might bring in the boost and see. There's a little extra sparkle. Maybe reduce and reduce the boost here. So, next option on the M1 is our custom control for clean. Wow. So, this is all the way up, super bright, and I dial it into the other side, which is mellow. And maybe in the middle. And again, all the way up. Hmm. Let's hear another guitar, because not all of you guys play Stratocasters, and I want to see how my beloved ES335 sounds. With the same setting. Yeah. It's already way too hot. So I dial back the clean volume. And here is my... Yeah. So what's the lesson? What's the trick here? The clean volume on the amp one is not a sheer volume. It is what happens on some vintage Fender amps. If you have a Fender amp, it doesn't have a master volume. This is why I put the master on 10 now. So this is the cooking recipe of a Fender amp. No master volume, which means like 10 or all the way up. Or if you are in a you know, uh, standard situation, go at least on five or put the master high. And then have the clean volume as low as you want, okay? But dial in the tone with that. So, and ah, this clean volume on the M1 has something what I call a treble bleed. You might know from your guitars as well. So, I show you this effect on the guitar. So, first, you could hear ES335 sounds nice and clean as well. And when I go for the drive channel, okay, you know that. 
that tune. <laughs> Okay, let me show you the treble bleed, which is this guitar. Okay, this guitar has been modded um, to show you what happens when you have a volume control on the guitar with a so-called treble bleed capacitor. On a standard um, Stratocaster or on a standard Gibson guitar, whatever model, you will not find this extra capacitor. Um, but something can be super helpful. So this is on 10. Okay, you can hear the hum, yeah. <laughs> now I reduce to five. And now I switch in the treble bleed. No treble bleed. Treble bleed. No treble bleed. Okay. So what happens is the more I dial back the volume on the guitar, the more of the shimmering highs you get. And this is what it actually is. Um, let me show you. Oh, my fox. <laughs> so this is the volume pot in your guitar. This goes typically to the ground. And this capacitor, in my case, is a silver Mika capacitor, which is a um, nice sounding capacitor. I use 200, what is it, 250 picofarads. And this simply bridges the in and the output of the volume potty. So this is ground, and this is output, and this is the, the side where the pickups come in. And yeah, you can experiment with different values for that capacitor. And there are some more options. Some people use a parallel resistor and some people use a serial resistor with a capacitor. So yes, this is some options to experiment. Okay, and that kind of treble bleed also you find on the M1 on the clean volume and also on the gain. So the message here with what is important is when you have a treble bleed, you get more highs when you dial the gain back or when you dial the volume to a lower setting. So these two um, controls have a treble bleed and the reason why I did that is because if you have high output pickups, usually you are missing the clarity. You want a bit more sparkling highs. And if you have high output pickups, you can easily afford to have a bit less gain. Then the whole thing is not as muddy and it's, it sounds nicer and brighter. Okay. I will continue with some more settings, sounds, how to match them. Back to the clean sound. See, this is like nice, but a bit too bright and not fat enough for a Strat. So for the Strat, I need a bit more volume here. And then I'm back to normal, which I like. Okay, 
Um, oh, wait a minute. I have another guitar <laughs> and show you another trick that you can do on guitars, which is something I've done to this guitar. Um, <laughs> on this guitar, I do have a switch that switches between the two typical wirings in Stratocasters. The standard wiring is there is no tone control for the bridge pickup and there is a tone for the middle pickup and there's a tone for the neck pickup, which is the case on this guitar. When That's a weird thing. I put all my um, neck pickup to this potty. I swapped those two. It's a personal preference. One day I wired it the wrong way <laughs> and I got used to it, so I <laughs> stick with this. Anyway, this is the case on my guitars. Um, so this is the standard way and this is the middle and nothing on the bridge, okay? Um, now this is a super subtle difference, but maybe you can hear. So this is standard wiring. When I use this switch here, I have a master tone, which is the other um, way many people like to set up their strats so they can get rid of the harshness of the bridge pickup a little bit. So, But now this tone is for all the three pickups. Okay, comes in very handy. Some people prefer that. Um, let's put it that way. I kind of like it for some sounds, but, and now listen super very carefully. I do hear a slight difference. Can you hear it too? Wow, master tone setting, standard setting. So this tone capacitor with the potty of 250K puts a load on that pickup and changes the sound. It's very subtle, but it's happening. Standard, master tone. To me, there's a slight touch of sparkle missing and the same thing even on the neck pickup. feeling that when I go for the standard wiring, not the master tone, that my neck pickup has a different yeah, clarity. It's just one, two percent, but it also has a bit lower resonance. Okay, now we are esoteric and one or two percent, but I wanted to show you that all these little things actually do affect your tone a little bit and um, the tone is created by the whole signal path it is the pickups it is the wiring it is the capacitors it is the kind of wiring and it is the, your cable and of course it's your amp and of course it's your speaker and even more important it's the setting of all that but I want to show you that if you pay attention to every little detail, you can get a little bit further towards what you like and what's your tone. Okay, let me continue with this and have some more overdrive sounds matching this clean tone. Clean, vintage. <laughs> So 
this was my vintage channel. Now I switch for classic. <laughs> This gives me a bit more gain and now I can dial in the custom control on the side to have it, whatever, brighter or darker. So this is custom control classic. This is more like uh, 80s rock. And this is more like vintage rock. Okay. Uh, I get this little feeping noise here. You know, guys, I would like to disconnect my AB switcher. Go direct. It, this is not a big deal. I switch off the AC30. I plug the guitar. Where did uh, the guitar goes in here? Goes straight into my amp. Yeah, somebody help me with the cable. Um, that, that. Okay, now no, this is. Yeah. Let me see. Speaker out. Yeah, okay, so this was a quick, quick uh, setup chain. Yeah, and see, it's, it's way cleaner. The reason for that is if we have the speaker cables and the input cables going to the AB switcher, inside the AB switcher, you know, the distance is not super brilliant. Uh, of course, everything has to be switched in one box. And the, the thing is, um, the AB switcher tries to be as neutral as possible, but still more wires and stuff uh, affects at least the feedback. So now, cleaner signal. Another channel, which is the modern channel, and yeah, you hear even more gain and uh, a nice warm mid range, which comes from the tone control here. And uh, yeah, you can dial it there. So for me, these are like four sounds that I would use on stage. And if I need one for solo and I need more volume, I would simply go and use the volume of the channel on the side of the custom control to get that channel louder. And then I have like, you know, my classic channel to be the lead tone, the vintage channel to be the rhythm tone and to have uh, whatever um, another sound for my clean and as I showed you in my last episode all these three sounds can be programmed into the three internal foot switches and then you have the, like your standard three channel amp setup um, with the amp one and uh, maybe you remember that I could use even the external foot switch to have a four channel setup in case you want to do that yeah, this is a lot of information on how to use that. Um, any questions on this? Um, let me see. Um, questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Andreas. Um, <laughs> okay, Iridium. Uh, how, uh, I, I do it in English. Kann man ein uh, Iridium uh, mit einer Strat auch guten Blues Sound à la Steve Ray Vaughan hinbekommen? Can I do a nice Blues Sound with a Strat and the Iridium Edition? You know what? I will have the Iridium 
here and try my very best and see how good it gets. Um, I might give it a try. Um, the, the Mercury was designed to do that, but the Iridium was designed to be something else. But maybe we can get it done. I will do this in a minute. Okay. Um, Keith. Hi, Thomas. Does the Overdrive Master change the power amp tone like it would on traditional amps? Yes. Or does it just change the volume so you can balance the channels without affecting the tone? Let's put it that way. The Overdrive Master volume for all the three Overdrive channels is kind of neutral, but the Master itself which means how hard I drive the power amp stage is actually affecting the way the power amp stage saturates. So um, does it affect the tone? Well, in the way of if you think tone is compression and saturation, kind of yes. But it's not, if you put this on 10, it sounds different from this putting on 10, it depends on the level amount that comes into the power amp stage. So let's put it that way. Amp 1 simply does the same like a tube amp. If you play your tube amp on living room volume, it sounds like it sounds on a living room volume. Amp 1 already sounds fuller, I believe, because that's the way I designed the zagging. But if uh, you crank it on stage, up to stage volume, it's, yeah, you can change the volume of a channel a little bit and it will stay similar. Of course, if you crank the, the amp all the way up, the power amp gets saturated as well. And then you have a bigger change. If you want to have more of this effect, you can reduce the power rate of amp 1 from 100 watts down to 50 watts. Remember, there is a low power mode, which makes the amp half power, 100 watts down to 50 watts. And then of course you can have more master volume engaged and then all the sounds are limited to 50 watts, which gives you a bit more compressed tones and uh, maybe you like it. I personally prefer the 100 watt headroom. That's my taste. Um, next question. Paul Rose. Hello. Hello, Paul. Ah, Paul, I have to say a, a few words about Paul Rose. Paul is a brilliant player. Um, we met 2004 at the Strat Fender Player Awards and he was one of the six finalists. Um, I was the lucky guy that won the <laughs> award, but Paul actually is the better player. Congrats to Paul. Um, what are the pickups in the strats, are you the same in all guitars? Well, this is a Fender. Ah, this is my this is my number two Fender, which is a 9060 neck, and I'm using uh, the Klopman set number one in this one. I have uh, a friend of mine. His name is Andreas Klopman. Do we have the picture with Andreas and Peter Weyer? Yeah, Andreas. Uh, ah, we, we go back many years. 25 years, 30 years, and he, he makes the pickups for me. Um, and he basically what he's doing is like he makes uh, Strat Replica pickups. And uh, this is my spare Fender guitar. And so this is uh, an old project having our Strat set number one in this guitar. And by now, I have another set which is called the Blue Set 2. I give you this in the other guitar. Yeah. Um, well, different guitar sounds different, but um, that's the second pickup set. Hmm, that's pickup set number two. But this is the same like on the other one, uh, on the other blue guitar. Um, how would they? sound different? Let's put it that way. I think these pickups sound a bit more woody and a little bit lighter, not as much irony. 
Well, that's my second set, so it must be better. <laughs> I have no idea. So, thanks Paul for asking. Uh, Martin Debonet. Hi Thomas, could I use the custom controls to have a normal volume clean and normal volume rhythm sound classic and then a louder solo? Yes! Um, that's actually the concept of the custom control. So you can dial in the volume for each channel and have and, and then you are able to get the channel that you like in the position where you want to use it. I mean, you can have even the vintage channel for your lead tones and you simply crank the master volume for overdrive and reduce the classic channel if you want to have this just your rhythm volume. So the classic could be your rhythm volume and then you have a vintage channel that's it's way louder when you go to the vintage channel and use that as your solo channel. So that's the concept of the custom control volumes. You can have every channel as it, at its own specific volume level and you can make your own set of sounds as you like. Okay, hello Thomas. Wie hoch darf ich mit dem clean volume gehen, wenn der Master am Anschlag ist und die Nano, <laughs> Nano Cap dran hängt? Okay, this was a German question asking how high can I go with the master volume? when I'm using one of these small nano caps. The nano cap is a 60 watt speaker um, that handles 120 watt peak, but you can kill it. So two options, either you have the half power mode um, activated by switching off the unit, press and hold this button here, and while holding it down, switch it on, then the amp one is 50 watts and you can do whatever you like with the master volume or any of the controls. Um, but as I told you before, you lose a little bit of that extra 100 watt head headroom. And for peaks, the nano can cap can handle that. So I play the nano cap many times with master volume on five, no problem. You can go to six, but after this, it's getting delicate. Uh, let me repeat my formula for how loud can you drive a speaker. If you have a speaker, no, mat no matter what brand, no matter what mod which model, you simply dial in your tone and you start with the master volume on a certain volume. And you increase the volume, you increase the volume, and there comes the point where it doesn't get any louder it simply gets more compressed. And that's the point where you should start, uh, where you should, should stop with the master volume. So you can hear there's still a lot on tap with the M1 here. But if you hear this directly connected with this speaker now, <laughs> it's super loud. So trust me, five is a good stage volume. You can go up to six with a nano cap. And then it's time to get, get an extra speaker. If you need more sheer volume on stage, the power is not giving you that extra power because the speaker has a certain well, amount of molecules it can move and then it's over. Then you need another speaker or a different speaker. But my speaker, you know, has a certain limit. So as every speaker does have a certain limit. And uh, my recommendation is stop at 5.5 to 6 and that's as loud as you should go. Um, stacks. When I put my master on 10, I get way too much his noise. <laughs> Please help. Well, you know what? Try to put the master on 10 on any other analog tube amp and you will get his and noise. Um, we do have a noise gate that most other amps, analog amps, tube amps, don't have. So, can you hear the difference when, when I get go? Let me go to a high gain sound. So, this is master on 10 and a high gain sound. Okay. 
and now I engage the gate. So this is what the gate's already doing. But having his from an amplifier is a natural thing. Any amp is producing amplification, <laughs> and amplification is meaning anything noise, and even if it's just a resistor at the input, is amplified. So if you put anything on 10 here, you will get noise. So that's nothing that is to blame on this amp or that's something typical for amplifiers. So, I mean, make it cleaner using the noise gate and uh, no worries if you put your amp on 10, then you will get some noise. Okay, next question. Ian, how different is the Iridium edition in the low gain mode to the Mercury edition? Are there any tones that both amps share, even with the difference of having completely different preamp and power amp sections? Um, well, the first thing is, I believe if I would tweak very long, I could get two sounds out of both amps being pretty similar. But that's not the way I designed these amps. Let's put it that way. The black one, the Iridium, is designed to be more a high gain amp. It's, it's a, it, it is not using the same circuitry. It's not using the same uh, behavior in power amp and in pre pre uh, preamp stages. And it's not only just gain. I mean, most people think, okay, now I have a, a high gain amp, it's just one parameter, it's a bit more gain at the front end, and that's all what's different. No, try it because you can have simply a neutral booster in front of the Mercury, and you will never get the sound of the Iridium. They are two different animals. So, how to answer the question? I would say, um, I could be able to have one sound out of both amps the same, but in general, it's like having two cars. I mean, you have a sports car and you have a like a racing car, and then you have a standard car for, you know, transporting uh, and, and and shopping stuff like this. And of course, we can squeeze four people in both cars, but what's the fun? A racing car is a racing car, and a traditional family car is a traditional family car. So there's a beauty about both. Um, I will later on maybe simply plug the black one in here and show you what I can do with this. Just check a few more questions here. Jens, hallo Thomas, habe ein paar Problemchen. Aha, mit einem oder anderen Overdrive Boost Pedal vor dem M1. Um, Mercury Edition, der Ton verschluckt uh, sich sehr schnell, auch bei kleinen Einstellungen. Okay, I translate to English. Jens, tells me he's, he's having a few problems if he has like overdrive pedals in front of the Mercury edition and of course in front of overdrive channels. Um, well, it all depends on how much gain you get. <laughs> If you want to have a pedal in front of an overdriven amp, I would choose the vintage channel. I tell you why. Because the vintage channel already has some gain, which is nice, but it is not fully at the edge of what you can do. So if you add another drive pedal in front of the vintage channel, you can kind of max out the dynamic range of the channel and use the color of your overdrive pedal in front of that channel. Uh, so this is like the channel to go for on the Mercury edition. If you plug it in front of the classic or the modern channel, there is already so much gain, so much compression, there's not much room. One little trick is possible. <laughs> we have a function called the low gain mode and our friend from the Netherlands who is um, very active on our Facebook uh, M1 user group um, 
Eric de Jong, he has a little video of the zero gain mode. What he did is he uses the overdrive channels and then he uses the remote one or MIDI and gets all the gain out of the channels. So then he can use external pedals and have the gain from the pedals. So we have the option to tweak the gain structure of the M1's channels. Uh -huh. That's tricky, but shows you how far I was thinking when designing the M1. So the gain and the tones we get from the channels, I thought are the gains that I wanted, that I liked the best. And of course, we all are different. We all play different guitars. We all have different pickups, we blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I see the point in maybe you have some pedals that have a, a different tone that you would prefer. And usually you combine these pedals with a clean tone or with a slightly overdriven amp, like we can simply realize with a vintage channel. But maybe you like the color of the classic and the modern channel and just want to add your own pedal. So this would be a, a thing to do. How it's done? Well, get a remote, plug it in. So now I'm going to the vintage channel. I press and hold the boost. Wait for the blinking. Okay, this is funny now. I hope I don't kill the amp. Okay. And now, while doing this... I can simply adjust the amount of gain from my vintage channel now. Or from the classic. So, there's two ways. You can either use a remote one or have a MIDI controller to do that, but this can also memorized, can be memorized in the amp one into each channel. So you can customize your channels. All the four channels can be customized in gain. And this is being done by pressing the boost button and then while pressing this down holding this and then it will be memorized to the channel. So there's some expert features on our website. You can look for the instructions there. But the message is simple. If you have a pedal that you like put it in front of the clean channel use the vintage channel, find the setting, and in 99% of all cases you will be happy because that's the classic way how to combine pedals with amplifiers, which is classic amplifiers would be Fenderish amps or Marshall style amplifiers, which are those two. And then if you are one of those special guys that want and love the classic channel here or the modern channel on the amp one and you want to experiment you can combine this pedal with this channel, but also mind that you have to get rid of some gain from the amp because gain has a limitation. You know, there is not endless gain. You should have gain, more gain, and of course it needs to match the amp. One little comment here is the more low end you have, the muddier the gain gets. So if you have more gain, you have to get rid of some low end. This is something I have done on the Iridium. You know what? Ah, maybe next question and then I switch for the Iridium. Um, could you kindly give me more info on the hidden dummy coil you use? Ah, what impedance do you use in comparison to pickups and where do you position it? Any further routing required wiring tips? Thanks. Okay, this is a question about uh, me, my strat, and my hump problem. Oh, now it's pretty clean. So, but 
let me switch off the, the gate. The amp is simply too clean. So, so this is hum. And now we have less hum. Hum, less hum. Hum, less hum. Okay. Um, this switch here engages my dummy coil. What is a dummy coil? A dummy coil is like an extra pickup that is, I place it here underneath the scratch plate between the five-way switch and the, the controls. And that's like another strat pickup that doesn't pick up the strings, just picks up the noise. And this is reversed in series with the pickup, so it adds the signal of the hum and doesn't add any string vibration signal. So this that's not more there's no different in gain or uh, the tone changes a little bit since the extra coil has some effect of um, uh, the schematics of pickup to the input stage and stuff but let's put it that way I even like that <laughs> because the thread is kind of very bright when I have the, the, the volume on 10 So now it sounds a bit darker, like a humbucker. Hey, I don't mind a little bit darkness if I have everything on 10. When I roll back the volume on the guitar, mind, remember, I had my treble bleed, so this brings the sparkling highs back. So I have like a little bit darker sound on 10, but an, an even brighter sound on lower settings. So makes my voice even broader in a way like very nice and clean to fat overdrive. Um, yeah, in the old days I used simply any pickup that was lying around um, Oh, if you go all the way, you, you try to match the same uh, resistor value like 8K or 6 point, whatever you have. Um, but then one day I found out if I have a humbucker with two, with two coils, hey, I have two dummy coils, kill a humbucker and you, have, you can mod two strats, that's a good deal. And of course they have less. It's not perfect, but it sounded good. So that's the way I, I do it. Um, Maybe I can post you a little diagram how I did the wiring after uh, we finished this live stream. I have to look on my computer, maybe I do a drawing and put it somewhere in, in the comment. Yeah, Marcel has another question. Um, do you have any recommendation for an in-ear headphone using Blue Box with Mercury Edition? I am looking for something that fits best to the frequency and behavior of fat cap. Mm. Um, actually, my in-ear days are luckily gone. <laughs> I, I play clubs and I love to play real cab cabinets. Um, I can't give you any recommendation. Maybe some of the guys that watch us now can do so and answer him the question. Um, all I know is my in-ear system that I have downstairs is um, some Sony headphones and I was checking out different systems to find one that has good mids. So I was, the first ones were horrible. They had just had simply highs and lows and sounded like a, a whatever, some, something for rap music, you know, with boom, boom, chuck. But I was missing all the nice, you know, tones for, for woody guitar sounds. So I was checking out different drivers and found some that were, had some mids and this was a big issue, but once I found some, I was happy. Okay, Martin, hi Thomas. How do you set up your rhythm versus lead volume in a live situation? Um, still keeping enough headroom to use your guitar volume as well as vary between clean, crunch and lead. Okay, uh, let's put it that way. 
I'm a lucky guy. When I'm playing in my bands, I'm allowed to be loud because in my bands there's Thomas Blue band, there's Blue plays Hendrix or Thomas Blue's Rock Anarchy. <laughs> so I'm allowed to be as loud as Eddie Van Halen. Um, but I know if you are in a different situation in a band, you have to provide some rhythm parts that don't kill the singer. So two things. One is I'm using a vintage channel sound that I can control with my volume here. So this is all I can do with just one channel and my volume control on the guitar. So there is a clean sound already, there is a crunch sound already. And of course I switch to another channel um, for lead. And this can be boosted with the volume. And when I go back for my... I have a perfect match for my solo town, tone. Um, well, let's put it that way. I have at least three sounds that I can use in, dif in, in different ways. Like there can be rhythm sounds, there can be solo sounds, like I showed you with my vintage setting. So I have on my pedal board, I have like nine sounds I choose from on my remote one and three of the sounds work the same way but they have a slightly different volume level and frequency punch so I can always decide on which of these I play and then on top on the second row I have my kick down boost sounds so here I show you this is the remote so if this would be my remote Vintage, classic, modern, and boost. These are the sounds that can be used for anything with the volume control of the guitar. And of course, kind of gain, more gain, a little bit more gain, and more power. And my kick down sounds are here. So it's like, this is over the top, last solo, I'm the guitar hero, I'm louder than the rest of the band, and this is where I start. And these are some effect sounds here. That's the way I manage it for myself. Okay, more questions. Oh my God, we never stop with questions. <laughs> Two questions. Expert features by the Silver Edition. Um, Hallo Thomas, hat die Silver Edition M1 auch diese Möglichkeiten der Einstellung von 50 Watt entstehen lassen? War über das Halten okay. Um, zweitens. Can I store the individual channel gain settings on the M1 Silver Edition and use it without the remote? Well, sorry, these features are only available for Mercury Edition. If you have a remote, you can use the same functionality with the remote. But we changed the hardware and we changed the software of the Mercury Edition to have all these new features kind of self-contained in the M1 itself. So sorry guys, I guess you have to get a Mercury then. Um, the silver, or you have to get a silver one, uh, the first edition of the M1 and have some kind of controller. Option one is the remote and if that's too big for you, there are some smart Russian things. What's the company called? Well, we have one in, in the company. It's, it's like such a small, ah, it's an AMT FS2 MIDI switch, AMT, Russian company, like a micro MIDI, MIDI controller. And with this AMT MIDI controller, you can send out the MIDI command to get your 50 watts or send out a different gain. So in theory, it's possible. Um, but the silver one, the first one, needs an extra controller. 
Okay, what is the next question? Einstellung von 50 Watt Endstufenleistung. Ah, Deutsch. Uh, no. Um, I think that's it. Okay, I show you something. This was the Mercury Edition. And now I will switch it for the Iridium. So we hear how to dial in an Iridium. I simply unplug the speaker, the guitar, and the mains. Yeah. And here we go. So, oops, too much reverb. Okay, um, this is now the Iridium Edition. Um, let me show you how this sounds with a Strat. Nice and sparkly. And what have I done? I used... Ah, I used the boost. Let's get rid of the boost first and see. To me, that sound is very transparent, very much in your face, very open, nice, but maybe not thick enough. So let me show what I would do is first I would try and turn the custom control. Now I'm having less high ends, less sparkling. On the other side again. That's super nice now. I would choose the middle. Use a little bit more volume. Uh, it's a bit too much for my taste. If I have no mids in my clean tone, it feels like, <laughs> yeah, something is missing. So it needs to have some, some woody mids. And then if the sparkle is on top, it's nice. the clean tone with the Strat. Um, if I go for the vintage channel and the boost and give it all the way boost for the Strat. Okay, compared to the Mercury, oh, where is it? Here. Let me put the mercury here so you, you see how this sounds. <laughs> uh, okay, um, compared to the mercury, this is beautiful in the high gain world when I. <laughs> but 
But when I reduce the volume on the guitar, I miss a little bit of this extra warmth from the Mercury, which kind of makes the sound real big. <laughs> I show you this with, with a real heavy guitar. Uh, let me show it right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is um, this is a proper humbucker guitar, ESP from my friend Alex Bayroth, um, yeah, Sinner and some other bands, yeah. <laughs> So, what I can do, and what I hear now, is I'm missing some high end. See? Humbuckers simply need some bite. Yeah, I'd simply increase the treble from 5 to 6, and here we are makes all sense. Um, this guitar uses Seymour Duncan humbuckers. I don't know the model, but this is uh, proper stuff for this kind of music, you know? Through must be out. Yeah, this is maybe I reduce the mids. And even more highs and here I have a proper brown tone. Eh? <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, let's go back for the stretch. And see how this sound works with a strat. Ouch! Everything too bright. <laughs> you know, see, that's the power of tone control. Everything that was brightening up the, the nice and big fat humbuckers is the wrong thing for bright single coils. <laughs> I simply go back and dial in less treble. Same channel, different setting, different guitar, makes sound. Oh, some nice reverb, I feel home. Yeah, 
This was the vintage channel and now it's the classic. <laughs> Sounds good too. And modern. Okay, too many notes, too many noises. Um, I'm playing here at speaking volume. I have a little monitor here that has such a tiny speaker and um, it even starts the feedback. So you can see, you can even play it with a different guitar, but it's a different animal. If you are into high gain, the black one is, is your friend. If you are into traditional woody tones, the silver one or the Mercury edition is a good starting point. And of course, both amps are flexible in a way, so they have a range where they overlap, but it depends on where you put your priorities. In the end, you have to decide. I can only make offers and, and tell you, hey, it works. This definitely works with humbuckers, and it definitely gives you tons of gain under control. And the Mercury is an amp that is designed to be classic, classic rock, bluesy, and it's, it's there. So they both focus in slightly different directions. Okay, next question. Craig Walters, could you tell me if all I want is classic amp tones clean to light crunch, should I just buy a current edition or would there be much advantage to wait for the amp X release? Well, if you are into classic tones, my personal opinion is get one of those. And this is all you need. Uh, they are small, <laughs> compact, sound killer. You've, you've seen a, a few of my AB comparisons like at the beginning of this episode, but there's more uh, with Marshall amps, with Fender amps. You can see how close you can get to all the traditional amps that we all love. And um, there is no need to, for you to wait on, on Amp X. Amp X to me is a new, breed of amp. It is the first all analog amp that gives you the digital um, options like programming effects, like having presets, like collecting amps uh, with the blueprints or what other companies are all doing with their digital um, modeling, so to speak. And if you are a straightforward player that simply needs a great tone, hey, the amp is already here. You no read, no need to wait. All good. So next one: Is it possible to upload a custom IR to Iridium? No. The Iridium edition, which is this one, has a built-in speaker emulation, which is analog, and it sounds really good. Um, you can switch it off and use your own IR, but it needs to come from an IR player of your choice, either from your door or some of those, whatever you use, torpedo, cap, you know, hello Jerome, he's the mastermind be behind torpedo, our French friend. Okay, um, so yeah, you cannot load it directly into this Iridium edition. Um, Aladdin Hell Chicken. Oh, what's this name? <laughs> Hell Chicken. I'm getting hungry. Okay. Um, can you put a big muff style pedal in front of the Iridium clean channel without getting lost in the mix? Aha. Um, so what's a big muff? I have a few big muffers so somewhere over here in the corner. Let me do another episode on this. But 
Um, let me explain what is a big muff. A big muff is like a fuzz pedal, um, like second generation of fuzz pedals. The first one were kind of the one that Rolling Stones used in Satisfaction, you know. Uh, but big muffs had a little bit more gain. They sounded more complete. Um, David Gilmour is a big fan of big muffs, you know, somebody that you know, and, and many others. I, I have, I think, five to ten big muffs from different eras and manufacturers, uh, mainly old one. Um, yes, you can do it, but it all depends also on the setting of the clean channel. If your clean channel is set to pristine studio clean with like no compression or anything, it's probably not cutting through, but as I explained earlier, if you crank the clean volume a little bit, you will get the mid-range. And the mid-range is a nice foundation for pedals because the mids will push it in the mix with your band. Okay, next question here. Uh, wooden of Angels? Okay, how does... The Iridium Edition handles switching from humbuckers to single coiled guitars. Um, do you use specific presets? Well, I use that guitar. It has humbucker that has a, a split function. Um, let me create an example here. So at this point, this is the humbucker, uh, the bridge humbucker, and this is just one coil of the bridge humbucker. Okay, the clean tone I'm using right now is kind of on the edge of breakup. So if I dig in and play the humbucker, it's too much. If I dig in and play the single coil, it's still okay. So, mm, playing that clean tone, I would say um, I have two choices. One is if I stay with a clean volume at this break at Point, I need to play soft on the humbucker mode and have the split mode for the bright sounds, but I have to compensate the volume with my playing. Humbucker and soft playing. Humbucker and hard playing. That makes sense. Okay, if you want to be totally safe, you reduce the volume and you can go for the humbucker. But does it sound good? I don't know. Try the custom control. Ah, a little bit better. And then if I would go and have the clean tone with the... This is way too thin. I would use the boost. That's another way it would work. So have the boost on when you are in single coil mode and have the boost off when you're in humbucker mode. That makes sense. Um, when you play overdrive sounds, I still can use... Both. The humbucker simply gives me a bit more beef. Yeah, anyway, this was the humbucker question. Um, hey Thomas, question on the M1 Mercury Edition. Do you have any suggestions on 
no, to get the response more immediate. I like the sound, but it sags compress a bit much for my taste. Well, um, yeah, let's try and reduce the gain. And um, sagging is, let's put it in, in other words, uh, what is compression, what is sagging? Um, to get it faster, I would have less bass and a bit more mids and upper frequencies gives you the feel of being faster. This is actually what I have done on the Iridium in general. But if you want to have this on the Mercury, I would reduce the gain as this enhances treble, like treble pleat. And then uh, maybe compensate a little bit with a three band EQ, use less treble from the post EQ, so to speak, after distortion. Then you have a faster, um, higher frequency that goes into the clipping that always feels fast. And then roll off too much highs with the treble. And that's the recipe that could work for you. And use more master. Okay. Master is always punch on tap. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul, um, how light is your touch when you play? Oh, both picking left and right hand. Um, love the M1. How hard? Well, first thing is my right hand picking is pretty hard. If you look at my pick, this is serious two millimeters or whatever. Um, I used to kill. I used to kill strings with that pick. Um, but put it that way. Uh, I can play the same speed on an acoustic guitar and I dig in deep and get the same energy out of acoustic guitar strings. But to be honest, it's no fun. So it's okay to be able to do that. It's okay to practice this. You know, I had my three piece German rock trio Dreist one, once and we played acoustic gigs. And I tell you, I stopped doing it because it's too hard, but it was super good to practice. Um, the same is, on the left hand. So it's good to be able and have a lot of control with your fingers. But then in the end, it's the best if you don't need that. It's like having a sports car. It's brilliant if you have like, whatever, 200, 300 horsepowers. If you don't need them, you can run smoothly. But once you need them and you, you learn how to dig in like Gary Moore, you know, then you can have the emotional expression. I mean, this is the thing, you know, if you play Gary Moore, you have to dig in. It's like... I could play that very lightly too, but... Uh... to do both and it's my emotional decision. If I want to go angry, I have to go and dig in and if I be, want to be nice and, you know, elegant in a way of, uh, you know, some yeah nice and fluent uh, saxophone-like playing, I go and play legato. So best is you practice both and use both. Cool. Um, What's the next question? Do we have more? I think that's the last question. Huh? Touch. Okay, we had the touch. Um, 
cease to be the first and only one in guitar history to reinvent an amp who is actually a guitarist himself. What would more? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I should be, no, I'm not the only one, but um, if you take all the big companies, um, yeah, it seems like a lot of the big companies have lost the, uh, well, the guys that are really doing it, you know? When, when you think of people that design amps and play, at least they know how to play and had um, a career as a, as a musician, we all know Paul, um, Les Paul. Um, I, mean, I mean, he is like my hero when it comes uh, to that end. And uh, then is Tom Scholz, uh, from the band Boston, who used to be an engineer and a guitar player. And uh, if you look at some of the other companies, some of the uh, amp designers like Dave Friedman, I think they know how to plug a guitar, yes. And um, But I can tell if a company has somebody that knows how to play amps and how it should feel. And um, some companies have lost that magic and uh, some still do. Anyway, I do my thing and I combine the both and I, I learn from both sides. I learn from playing and bring that stuff into the products and I also enjoy playing my own products and sometimes inspires me for my music as well. So thank you for all of that. Um, if you don't have any more questions, is this the last question for today? It seems so. Hey guys, um, it's been a big, 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 big pleasure for my second live stream. Um, there's more to come next week, same time, I guess. We simply will be out there every week. And uh, if you do have some topics we should talk about, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'll have a look and see what we can do. Maybe we have the Brian May guitar next week and I can show you something with that. Or if you want to hear something else, um, simply write us and we will find um, a way how to get some information out to you. Um, Okie doke. So stay safe, stay healthy. And I mean that physically and mentally. <laughs> if you are home, Use the time for something serious, clean up your rooms, uh, get the guitar restrung, tune them up, do some practice and whatever, build your pedal boards. And um, I hope I see you next week and I hope I see you on stage at the end of this whole crazy situation. See you, cheers.